Hey, Wahoff Church, good morning. I'm excited for us to be back together gathering uh, and fellowshipping and doing what we do again this week. I hope you're enjoying yourself, your time of fellowship and uh, breaking of bread, but why don't you grab a seat and uh, come join me for our time of teaching. I will be honest, I, I've thought about this, this story all week. And it's been a rough one for me. So as you know, we've, we've been doing a lot at Wellhouse through our content, uh, our stories and our podcasts on the kingdom of God. Because I think when I read the New Testament, when I read the Bible in general, the kingdom of God is, it's the defining thing in Christianity, and yet it's often overlooked. And as I began to study and explore the kingdom of God, I realized that it was so holistic and there was so much to it that I just didn't feel like many congregations, many expressions of faith were living it out the way that I wanted to see it lived out. It's not to say they were doing it wrong, but I don't think they saw it or see it or were expressing it in the same way that I do. And I want to. And that's why I made Wellhouse. That's why we created Wellhouse is to be a different kind of expression of the kingdom of God. And I had already planned to do this series that, that I'm starting today on earth as it is in heaven. Because I believe that's the mission of the kingdom of God, that what happens on earth would be like how God intended it in heaven. Heaven is the dwelling place of God. And so to do on earth as it is in heaven is to say that Our goal is to bring heaven to earth, that the reality of heaven would be a truth here and now on earth. And this week, I was, you know, I've been planning to do this. And this week, what happened at our nation's capital was abysmal, um, appalling. Um, embarrassing. Uh, I have so many negative emotions, and just so you know, I'm filming this Saturday night because I tried to film it a few other times this week, and I just couldn't. But I don't understand. And one of our values at Wellhouse is to be real and. I think that extends from me as well, but I don't understand how someone can hold a flag that says Jesus saves and choose violence and hatred and do the things that they did. I I truly, I do not understand how someone can do that. I don't understand how someone could be so blatant in taking the Lord's name in vain in that way. Um, I don't understand the racism that was shown and put on display this week by our leaders. I mean, I'm sure you've all seen the comparison photos of when Black Lives Matter was protesting on the lawn and at the Capitol building, and how much police presence and armed guards they had versus when the white people, the Trump supporters, showed up to do it. Um, I don't understand any of it. And for me, when I was growing up, Um, some people that were very influential upon me and mentors upon me used to remind me of this verse in Matthew that I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. Um, 
And I feel like it's fitting for where I'm trying to go with this story series as well as the conflicting emotions that I have right now as well as the conflicting emotions that I have about what's happened this week. Um, But in Matthew, beginning in chapter 5, Jesus enters into a teaching that's called the teaching of the Sermon on the Mount. And he gets on the side of a mountain. and He begins to teach. And as he's teaching, he goes through a variety of progressions in it. But it's an ethical sermon. It's about how do you live your life in order to live a life pleasing to God. And he comes to this moment at the end of the sermon, at the end of the teaching. And he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. And so he gives us this this weird thing here, that he goes, Just because you call me Lord doesn't mean that you're doing it right. It doesn't mean that you're going to um, enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those that do the will of my Father in heaven. And I remember growing up, and I don't know if anybody ever explicitly told me this or if it's just something that I conjured in my head trying to understand what they were saying, But I always thought that meant that if you, if you didn't avoid sin at the level that someone else did, or if you didn't, if you didn't have enough of a fight against sin, or you had too much sin in your life, that somehow that was going to disqualify you because you weren't doing the will of the Father in heaven. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that in the Sermon on the Mount, the immediate context where Jesus is telling the story, it's as much about the things that we do because we're Christians as much as it is about the things that we shouldn't do because we're Christians. So I got to tell you, as I sit here today, Just because you hold a flag that says Jesus saves, that doesn't mean you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven. If whatever happened this week at the Capitol building is your understanding of the kingdom of God, I don't know how you get there. Because this text continues. And he says, On that day, Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name, do many deeds of power in your name? Didn't we do all these things in the name of Jesus? Didn't we do all these things and give you credit for it? Like, shouldn't that be enough? But I think Jesus' response here is really telling. Verse 23 says, Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evil doers. The Christian life is as much about the things we should do as much as the things we shouldn't. In fact, I might even be so bold to say that it's more about the things that we should do versus the things that we shouldn't. Jesus puts it in a caveat that it's their evil doing that's the problem. From my perspective, where I sit, what happened this week in D.C. happened at the work of evildoers. That's not something I can condone. That's not something that I can be okay with uh, at any 
facet. I, everything that happened as I've toiled on it and toiled on it and toiled on it. Nothing about that situation is God honoring. Everything about that situation is evildoers. And I got to say, I'll be the first one to say that there's grace for that. But I'll equally be the first one to say that that's not a Christianity that I want to be a part of. That's not an expression of the kingdom of God that I want to endorse. And so, because I can't, I can't endorse that. I I refuse to. And by no means am I going to be quiet about that. Through this series that I'm calling On Earth As It Is In Heaven about How do we as the people of God here and now today in 2021 and beyond live out the reality of the kingdom of heaven? How do we be pockets of heaven and the kingdom of God doing the will of the Father here and now surrounded by so much evil, so much evil doing? How do we do that? Well, we're going to spend several, several, several weeks tackling this question because I think it's vital. But a lot of what we're going to encounter in the next few weeks is Jesus telling stories. They're parables. Jesus had a lot of, had a, a lot of statements recorded in the Gospel of Matthew where he says, the kingdom of heaven is like, and he tells this really poetic story. So for me, I don't think that I'm the only one that can interpret those stories. And I think we need a lot of different voices in helping us interpret those stories. Um, Because from one perspective to another, the kingdom of God and the reality of the kingdom of God looks different. And as long as we can all agree that what happened in D.C. is not the kingdom of God then I definitely want to hear what you have to say and what you think the reality of the experience of the kingdom of heaven. What what is that like today? Is that doing good deeds? Is that prayer? Is that the miraculous? Is that seeing God's beauty in nature? Um, Is that fighting injustice? There are any number of ways the kingdom of God can look. I mean, it, and for some people, it can be fighting sin in their life. And I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Um, and if you haven't been able to tell, I'm pretty conflicted uh, based on what happened this week. And so what I want us to do this week is I'd really love to just ask you the question. What, what do you think the reality of the kingdom of heaven is like? If you had to write your own story, the kingdom of heaven is like, would you tell it to us today? Could you invite us into your understanding of the work of the Spirit and life in Christ and what that reality looks like in 2021?